Palantir is one of the biggest privately held Silicon Valley companies, valued at over $20 billion. Its IPO could be one of the biggest, and they aren't even a household name. In this video, we're going to look at what exactly is Palantir, what do they do, and why the company is valued so much. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Palantir was started in 2003 by Alex Karp, Stephen Cohn, Joe Longsdale, Nathan Gettings, and most notably Peter Thiel, who was one of the founders of PayPal alongside Elon Musk and an early investor of Facebook. So Palantir has some big names behind it, but what do they actually do? According to their website, Palantir is a data fusion platform for integrating, managing, and securing any kind of data at a massive scale. This sounds great and all, but that's a lot of buzzwords. So I went digging to see what they actually do and how their products are being used. Palantir has two main products, Palantir Gotham and Palantir Foundry. Palantir Gotham is used primarily by the US government and has been under some controversy, but we will get to that later. Palantir Foundry is the commercial product and is used by companies like Fiat Chrysler and Airbus. Airbus used Palantir Foundry to accelerate aircraft production time and pinpoint the exact location where their slowdowns were in production. Airbus also partnered with Palantir and used their platform to develop Skywise, which tracks and analyzes an airline's operation and performance. Skywise also can predict maintenance tasks before failure even occurs on that component of the plane. This is huge for airlines as they can fix issues before they even arise or even start troubleshooting problems before the plane even gets to its destination so they can have minimal downtime for their planes. This saves them time and money on planes being delayed for maintenance issues. The Airbus A230 and the A330 have this system already in place. Fiat Chrysler used the Foundry platform to anticipate defects and warranty claims. This saves time and money as they can identify issues before the cars are released and a recall has to be made. Also, they can pinpoint the exact plant and exact place in production where the problem is occurring. This used to take months to do before, as they would have to locate the issue manually as warranty claims came in. Now they can quickly fix any issues saving time and money and making a more reliable product. Other companies using Foundry are Morgan Stanley to investigate and prevent fraud and pharmaceutical companies like Merck, which use the platform to analyze chemical data to make new products. Foundry is definitely a powerful tool that can be used by a lot of different industries that have mass data that they need to search through. With the big names already putting it to use, I think it is a good sign that the company has a solid product that people want to use. If a product saves companies time and money, it is an easy sell. Now let's get into their other product, which is Palantir Gotham. Gotham is geared toward government use and has been used in some possible controversial ways. The base example they use from their website is after Hurricane Florence, which hit North and South Carolina. The Palantir platform was used to help identify communities that were in the greatest need by combining public available flood data, weather information, and social vulnerability census data. This is a good example to show how their platform can use data from all these different sources and actually combine them to get a clear answer to the problem they are trying to solve. Palantir also helped the US government track down Osama bin Laden by using data gathered by the CIA and other intelligence agencies. But the Gotham platform has been used for some controversial tasks such as helping police with tracking license plate numbers. Both Los Angeles and New York police departments use Palantir Gotham software to search over 500 million plate photos in less than 5 seconds. This is a very powerful tool as it can help law enforcement track down suspects as they gather huge amounts of data while they are patrolling. One of the most controversial uses of the Palantir platform is the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement or ICE for short. ICE has been using Palantir since 2014. In 2019, ICE conducted one of the biggest immigration raids on a chicken processing plant in Mississippi. 680 migrant workers were arrested during the raid. Immigration activists have been protesting Palantir since they are working with ICE 
and their software was believed to be used to conduct this raid. The protests have been having an effect. Some employees have mixed feelings about the company's work with ICE. In August, more than 60 Palantir employees signed a petition asking management to redirect profits from ICE contracts to a nonprofit charity. Many people don't like how powerful Palantir platform is and how it is being used by the government to track people. People see this as Big Brother always watching you. With all this data being collected, the concern over privacy also comes into play. Many people feel uncomfortable that the Palantir platform can be used to gather information on people that were simply just passing by traffic cameras, but now all this information can be linked to them using the Palantir platform to sift through large data sets from multiple sources, such as license plate photos. Also, any government worker using this platform can search whatever they want on it. Palantir has been highly criticized on privacy concerns. They have stated that their system has an audit trail, so whoever is using their system is being tracked and they can see what they were looking at and for how long. Although they do have this audit trail, it might not do any good if no one is looking at it. Also, audit trails should be audited by a third party so they can make sure people aren't using the system for nefarious reasons. Another big government project Palantir has taken over is Project Maven which is a Pentagon program to build an AI-powered surveillance platform for unmanned aerial vehicles. Basically, the job is to build a system for the U.S. military to deploy and monitor autonomous drones. This system would supposedly give the government real-time battlefield command and control and the ability to track, tag, and spy on targets without human involvement. Google previously held the contract to build this system, but decided not to renew the contract over ethical concerns and pushback from employees. The CIA has also given Palantir a lot of funding over the years through their venture capitalist firm, QTEL. Palantir has also secured over $1 billion worth of government contracts, so Palantir and the U.S. government are definitely working hand in hand. Despite all this controversy, Palantir is looking to start offering public shares sometime soon. Leaks of their S-1 filing circulating and it gives us a peek of how the company is doing financially. Screenshots of a draft S-1 statement revealed Palantir generated revenues of roughly $742 million in 2019. That revenue was up from $595 million in 2018, a gain of roughly 25%. Palantir lists a net loss of $580 million for 2019 which is a big shocker for some, as it shows why the company needed to raise so much money, as it is not yet profitable. For the first six months of 2020, Palantir recorded revenues of $481 million, a 49% gain to the same period last year. Palantir has worked hard to maintain its level of expenses in sales and marketing, research and development, as well as general administrative costs. Palantir kept expenses in check in the first half of 2020, despite its increase in revenue. This document leak has also shed some light on how much Palantir makes on government contracts versus commercial sales. For the first half of 2020, Palantir generated $258 million in government-derived revenue, which is around 53% compared to $224 million in commercial revenue, which is around 46% in 2019. Government revenue was also $140 million, or around 45%, and commercial revenue was $177 million, or around 55%. Together, that means that government revenue increased by 76%, versus just 20% growth in its commercial business. So this means that the majority of Palantir's revenue is coming from government contracts, rather than commercial use. This could be seen as a bad thing, however, as government contracts could be less reliant as leadership changes. However, I believe Palantir is software that is super powerful and has a lot of uses in government and commercial use. Despite all the justified controversy and ethical issues, Palantir has built a software platform that could do things that others cannot. I think they have a lot of growth ahead of them as more commercial businesses start to see the power and use for their tools. And with that being said, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos.